probably should shut the door. Yes. Thank you. Really. Seminar series. Today we have Roberto Montemayor. Roberto is a master's student here at, UIC, at UAUC in the Civil Engineering Department. He works with Professor Reisler as an advisor. And he is the founder of a company called Prothermic that's established in the northeast of Mexico. And they deal a lot with concrete materials. So today he's going to talk to us about one technology that he's interested in his research and with his company that is cellular concrete. So let's give him a Thanks, Javier. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Roberto Montemayor, and today I'm going to talk about the past, present, and future of this amazing material called cellular concrete. Javier already introduced myself. I just would like to add that I was so lucky to be able to work in the industry for five years and get experience in the field and then come back to study uh, to hear a, a master's degree in the University of Illinois and learn the behind the scenes, the theory behind the, the application that has been really fulfilling. So first of all, what is cellular concrete? This is a material that replaces coarse and fine aggregates of traditional concrete totally or partially by very fine bubbles of, of air. I have a, a lot of interest in, in this material. I think it's a great material. And I hope that at the end of this presentation, you share with me a little of the interest I have of this material and think where you can use it in each one of your areas. So first, let's talk a little bit about the past, the history of cellular concrete. This is a, a timeline of the most important events related to this material. I put University of Illinois at the end because hopefully the research that we are doing right now in the future can be seen as an important event for this, this material. Uh, as many construction materials, we can trace back an, an origin or a similar application to the Romans. They understood that if you mix concrete with very porous aggregates, with a cellular structure, you can have very good benefits uh, and you can do amazing ex structures, such as the Pantheon in Rome, which takes advantage of the lightweight of this aggregate to reduce the dead load. Modern cellular concrete began in 1920 when Dr. Johan Axel Ericsson in Sweden was trying to find a material that could replace construction wood. So in 1924, he patented gas, uh, gas concrete that is a concrete with, with that is a cellular concrete that has similar properties in terms of density and thermal conductivity as wood. It took him five years to get a company that was interested in, in his technology. So in 1929, the first factory uh, of zero concrete started. Its name is Whiton. And it comes from, I don't know how to spell this name, but it's the white from this town in Sweden. And Beton, which means concrete in Swedish. Then in the 1940s, another very important person came, uh, whose name was Joseph Hebel. He had the reinforcement to cellular concrete, making it more feasible for a lot of structures. Actually, Germany was reconstructed with a lot of cellular concrete for the reasons that the land fields were completely filled with, with uh, uh, waste from construction, from demolition from the war. So they needed a, a new material 
that didn't generate a lot of waste and can also be recycled. So that is the reason that they look for base use cellular or concrete. Then in the 1950s, another technology emerged that is foam concrete. Uh, the air train technology began in the 1930s to try to improve the resistance of concrete to freeze and to damage. But in the 1950s, a new method was invented to produce uh, cellular concrete, which is to add basically foam to a cement base. Since then, that technology has widespread and a lot of applications of cellular concrete has been developed. So now, let's talk about the present. There are two main production methods of cellular concrete. One is autocrate, aerated concrete, and the other one is foam concrete. This is the one that Dr. Johan Axel Ericsson uh, made, and foam concrete is the one that developed in the 1950s. So, autocrate, aerated concrete is also called AAC. And basically, it consists of making a slurry with a blowing agent. Most of the case is aluminum. This agent is used as a yeast to increase the, the volume of the base and generate bubbles. So the process consists of putting <coughs> this mix in very big molds, leave them for the first setting, and then demold these, these, these molds, but these very huge blocks, cut it using wire uh, using wires to make an exact dimension. This is a very the the elements that you obtain from this are very exact in in, in terms of, of dimensions. And then put everything in a very big autoclave. This will take about eight to maybe ten ten hours, depending on the on the mix design. And the idea of making this pressurized and heat curing environment is to create a soft pro uh, product that is called torremolid. This is a mineral structure that is very strong and provides great stiffness and stability to the cellular concrete. This production method can only be used for precast elements. Then the other method is foam concrete. This relies in the use of using foaming chemicals. These are surfactant molecules that consist of one polar head and one non polar tail. So this head is water loving and the tail is water hating. So when you mix it or stir it, bubbles are self assembly and it gets. Uh, gives the volume and the stability to the concrete. And the process is to make first uh, cement paste with cement, fillers, water, and that mixtures, put it on, on the mixer, and then make a foam, a very stable foam similar to shaving cream by combining water and foaming agent and using a foam generator. You add this to, to the mixer, blend it, and then finally you have from concrete. <coughs> a, great, a very important thing about foam concrete is that it needs stability. So mix design is very crucial to get this stability. This is a concrete that didn't get the stability and it collapsed uh, when while the it was setting. Uh, uh, another key parameter for stability is setting time. Temperature plays a very important factor, but also the distance from the concrete plant to the construction and also the application is different to pour just concrete on the floor than to pour it seven floors above. Another very crucial thing to mention is that several concrete does not behave like traditional concrete. Why do I say that? This cellular concrete does not have the same strength as regular concrete. And a lot of people think, okay, let's reduce the water cement ratio of foam concrete to increase the strength. 
does not apply in here because that, uh, for example, that case if you reduce water summer ratio, it can also create on, on a stable systems. The best way to check the quality control of concrete, and I would say that is the main parameter, is density. It's a very simple formula. You just add all your ingredients, divide by the volume that you are getting, and you get the wet density of the concrete. This wet density needs to be consistent. So, for example, if you are taking nine cubic meters from one ready meter <coughs> rock, the first cubic meter that you get out should have a weight plus or minus 10% than the, the design wet density. If not, you are getting something uh, no, a completely different density. This is a crucial point to determine if you are having an unstable mix. Serra concrete has a lot of properties. I will focus this talk on four main topics. That is density, thermal conductivity, rheology, and strength. First, I will mention what are the properties of, or, of serra concrete, what are the characteristics, and then how we can take advantage of these characteristics and use it for certain applications. <coughs> Let's start with density. Uh, I really like this, this photo. This is something that a client once told me when we were pouring concrete. He told me, I, I am I am feeling like the Rolex movie in which uh, an O'Hare company is selling encapsulated air bottler. So he said, you are making me dumb. And I think that is quite funny. But more seriously, 25 to 85% of zero concrete is air, which means that you can produce this everywhere in the world. You, you just need the, the cement and foaming agent and, uh, and then you don't rely on a lightweight uh, stone quarry that is nearby or a polystyrene factory that is also nearby. You can make every, every, uh, this concrete with atmospheric air. And uh, since it's a lightweight concrete, we can take advantage to reduce the dead load of the structures. Uh, also, have a transportation efficiency in ready mixed trucks. You can obtain more volume per truck than any other concrete reduce labor. Uh, have you ever tried to wait uh, or carry one bucket of concrete? It's really heavy compared to one bucket of lightweight concrete. You can do it with just one hand and very easily. It's up to eight times lighter than regular concrete and four times lighter than soil. It's also something worth uh, knowing. So let's talk a little bit about application. This is a, a case which this bridge had a deficient structure. It couldn't handle, handle the loads that it need to, to support. So what they did is they replaced all the sands in the bridge, all the sand in the bridge by server concrete, reducing the weight that the structure needed to support and increasing the load that the, the bridge can support. So it's a very sustainable way to solve an issue because you don't need to demolish all the bridge. It's also more faster and a cheaper solution than to replace it completely. Another application is for big retaining walls. Sometimes you have very tall structures that if you have compacted soil, it can generate a lot of pressure in a retaining wall by reducing the by taking out the, the compacted soil and using cellular concrete, you reduce heavily the pressure in the retaining wall. And also thick overlays. This is more for, for a construction. Actually, I am really proud about this product, this application, because this is a house um, that wanted to have another floor on top. The owner of this house was, is actually a director of one of the top ready mix companies in Mexico. And they called us to make this, this job. So uh, I am very proud of, uh, of this. They needed to level the floor to be able to, to leave and, and put uh, 
the floor tiles or, or the marble rocks that they were going to, to add. And, but the thickness that they needed was up to 30 centimeters to 20 centimeters in some places. That is a lot of weight if you use regular concrete. And the structural uh, engineer told them that they need to, uh, by force to use a, a lightweight uh, filler. They called us, they were very happy with the, with the result. So this is another application. If you ever have to do a thick overlay, lightweight concrete is a great solution for, for this. Now let's talk about thermal conductivity. Um, thermal conductivity really is decreased as the density is also decreased. And uh, just a little background, the thermal insulation of a certain construction element is determined by the thickness of this element divided by the thermal conductivity and the area. Most of the times we use the area as one and then we just multiply it to the complete area. But in this case, if we have a lower thermal conductivity, we have a higher thermal resistivity or thermal insulation. So cellular concrete is also a great product that uh, for energy efficient constructions. And uh, another great benefit that has is the fire protection. Here in the left, you, you have polystyrene that is commonly used for thermal insulation or uh, extruded polystyrene also that is commonly used. Both do not have the same, well, not at all have the same protection as cellular concrete. And even cellular concrete has higher potential than regular concrete for fire resistance. And that is because cellular concrete, the porous structure, can liberate the pressure that is uh, increasing with the, with the temperature inside. So you can release it through the porous structure. So my way of thinking is if we decrease the weight of the concrete, we are also decreasing the, the strength. So we need to find or we need to use the server concrete for non-structural purposes to obtain the higher thermal efficiency. And this is a great application for that. Uh, this is a flat roof, a flat concrete roof. So when it's casted, it's just flat and then you need to add an overlay to have some drainage in case of, uh, when rain comes. So this overlay, this slope, is not structural and you can use very lightweight concrete. This is one of the applications that we do most in, in Mexico. Uh, this is a comparison with an infrared camera. In the right, well, just a little background, this is a neighborhood that all the houses are the same. The only difference between the right and the left is that the left use a cellular concrete overlay and the right use a traditional concrete overlay. So these pictures were taken almost at the same, same time, one minute difference between each other. Uh, so it's the same conditions, but the, as you can see, the temperature inside the house is 10 degrees lower thanks to the cellular concrete overlay. Uh, another application is uh, infill. In infill application is to fill some gaps and provide some thermal insulation to, to walls. This is a, again a great application because the cellular concrete is not supporting any load at all and you can use very lightweight concrete with great uh, thermal performance. But there are some cases in which you can combine both. You can have an structural capacities and also thermal insulation. And this is the case for these uh, roof slabs, precast slabs that are made with auto uh, technology and solid block of, of cellular concrete. Uh, another great property that uh, cellular concrete has 
it seems really ugly. You can see in the picture, it almost seems like it's, it's moving. This uh, rheology provides self-leveling properties, self-compacting. You can fill gaps if you need to uh, stabilize a, a source very easily with, with this material. And it's extremely easy to pump. You don't need to have the very big pump that all the contractors are fighting and that is really expensive. You can use very uh, small pumps to pump up to seven or more floors very easily with this material. Oh, actually it's a video. <laughs> how, it, how it moves very easily. So, self-compacting applications, sometimes in, in the roads or in construction you have a bunch of installations that you need to protect. With several concrete you don't need to compact because the compaction can also damage the, the installations. You need to pour the concrete it will flow very easily, it will fill all the gaps uh, around and protect very efficiently and fast all the, all the installations. For self-leveling applications, it's also a great idea. You have a slab, you need to level everything, five more centimeters, three more centimeters. You just put the concrete and with almost no labor, you can have a very nice uh, uh, level so that when the floor guys came, they don't have a lot of, of trouble installing the, their systems. For geotechnical applications, this is also a great idea. For example, this is a, a case of a complicated compaction. Here in the right, here in the picture, this, this, uh, uh, this wall, collapsed when they were digging the hole for, for this construction. Actually, in here you can see that the fountains or the neighbor were exposed. So this was a really difficult project and also very dangerous, actually. When the wall collapsed, some injuries were, were present or were heavy. I am not sure, but I think that somebody died. So this was a, a very, very bad situation. And the way that the construction uh, company solved it is they put a retaining wall and they ask us to fill it with several concrete. It would be very dangerous to have somebody compacting soil by, by, by hand. And uh, to use concrete, it would be a lot of, of weight. I have some other pictures. The left one, you can see the height of the of the wall. It was 18 meters high, so it's uh, significant. And here, it's you can see a picture once that we get to the to the top. So we were able to to solve the, the issue. And also, we noticed that there were some caves on the other side. So it was a very poor soil. A very bad job that the previous construction guys did. But the left picture is actually this hole. The server concrete start filling through the cracks in the concrete to fill all those voids. So it's also it was a, a great solution. It, it is also used the server concrete to fill on juice installations. It may be dangerous to have very big pipes exposed and that somebody could, could that since it's not being used, nobody cares about that and then somebody can, can fall and have an accident. So it's better just to fill these installations and avoid any, any accident. And now let's talk about compressive strength. I already mentioned that Zero concrete does not have the same strength as traditional concrete, but we can take advantage of, of that. This is the crushing behavior of cellular concrete. In here, you can see that there is first a linear response, but then we have this plateau. This plateau is very interesting because that is when energy dissipation happens, and we can use cellular concrete for uh, energy absorption applications. 
the most common one and the most famous one is the airport arresting systems. This is a very uh, known case because Mike Pence, the vice president, I think is, is right now, was flying in this airplane. And the idea is that if, the, if this was on New York, uh, uh, I think. And the, the idea of this system if the, is that if the airplane does not have enough time to stop, it will fall to this bed of cellular concrete blocks to crush all the concrete, dissipate the, the energy, and will mainly damage the concrete instead of the, of the airplane. It can be also used to protect pipes for in expanded soils. In some cases, you have expanded soils that uh, change maybe because uh, uh, something on, on, on the run or some seismic activity. So here the idea is that the soil compress the server concrete or protect the installations. And also a great benefit is that server concrete is very easy to dig. So if you need to, you know that for a certain uh, trench that you need to pour, maybe in three years you need to uh, <coughs> dig out uh, something to put some installations or to change the pipe diameter, server concrete is a, a, a great solution for, for, for that. Now let's talk about the future. I am not a wizard. I cannot predict the, the future. But what I can do is tell you about the, in the challenges that the industry is facing right now and how server concrete can help with these challenges. And we are going to talk also a little bit about what is the research that is happening right now in the university that can provide certain benefit for the future. So one, the first challenge is urban densification. This means that we will need to have taller buildings and that server concrete can decrease the, the dead load. We will also take advantage of existing structures, structures and renew. It will be more difficult with urban densification <coughs> to uh, demolish a building because you will have neighborhoods, neighbors on, on all sides. So, server concrete can decrease the, the, the load of the, con of the of a certain structure and still be useful for the future. But also, there will be an increase in, in traffic and we will need safer transportation and safer roads. There are some companies that are also implementing the same ideas as airport arresting systems to roads, like maybe the mid panel elements, the division walls, can be used, can be made out of several concrete that in the case of a baby called uh, <coughs> going that way, it can be stopped instead of rebounding and damaging another vehicles. Here in the university, Yusong and Jamie Clark are working on on researching and understanding the behavior of server concrete and how the microstructure of this material can be optimized to obtain a greater advantage and greater energy absorption. Another uh, challenge is the natural resources. Green construction has significantly increased in the last years and will increase in the in the next year heavily and they rely or they put a, a lot of special attention on energy efficiency and recycle and use of recycled materials for thermal insulation i am working right now in super lightweight concrete which is densities below 160 kilograms per cubic meter I'm working on the mix design, the applications for, for, for this material. And uh, I would like also to thank my advisor, Roser, and, and Professor David Lang, that they are helping me a lot with this, with this research. 
and about uh, recycled materials, well, uh, concrete, uh, recycled, uh, right now in the, here in the university, also Jamie Crack and Jusong are investigating the use of recycled concrete for uh, energy absorption. And, and they are checking how the microstructure change and affect the properties of, of the concrete. And uh, finally, about contamination, uh, uh, about this, this challenge, how concrete can help this? Uh, there are two options. One is several concrete can take advantage of of the use of fine particles. There are a lot of companies that have uh, waste of these fine particles and for zero concrete have a lot of, of benefit. But also zero concrete has a lot of surface area, it has a very high surface area that can absorb contaminants. Richard Barton is using nanoparticles to make a photocatalyst reaction in which um, very uh, harmful soft, soft, uh, substances can be disintegrated into less harmful, harmful uh, substances. And uh, I am working also on the carbonation of cellular concrete, which means that we can absorb CO2 from the environment and convert it to uh, calcium carbonate. So I hope you enjoy my, my lecture and uh, please let me know if there is any any question. Uh, I have one question. So it was a very beautiful presentation. I really enjoyed it. Uh, what is the cost? Like, how much is it expensive or is it cheap? What is the cost factor? <clears throat> it's it depends on the density that you that you have. But as a general rule, it's around 10 to 20% more expensive than traditional concrete. But in some cases, you can have some certain benefits as, as the pumping. In some cases, pumping for concrete is really expensive, and pumping for several concrete is not that expensive. So for certain projects or, or jobs, it may be even cheaper than regular concrete. specifically into what you're doing to make <coughs> super light uh, concrete. Can you tell us more about those challenges that you've been facing or how are you doing that? Uh, uh, the phases, uh, the things that I am facing is the application. Uh, so this is, uh, I am able to do this very light with concrete. It doesn't have the, it is a very weak concrete. So how can we use these uh, thermal properties for different projects? Like a lot of, of insulated materials don't, do not have also, also strength. So I am trying to find out which applications are more feasible for, for this concrete. And how do you do it? Do you use a different foam? How, many, how much air is there in the... It's, uh, it's a proper mix, mix design. That is the, the main idea. You have to have a stability in, in the concrete. You need to think about the rheology. You need to think about the uh, integration of, of the bubbles, but also uh, there is a, a thing called in foam that it's drainage, which means that the surrounding of the bubble gets drained to, because of gravity or because of different uh, forces. So you need to adjust your mix design to properly uh, avoid this issue and create the stability. I don't know if I solved your question. It's <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Let's think. I hope you can follow my company on Instagram and 
and Facebook to be <laughs> updated to different projects. And, and here are the, the references of the presentation. Thanks. I thought at the beginning that you might do it in Stack and all. I was like, <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> okay. The company is now. Uh,